is Susan Sun, Nana Maker with SunIsTheFuture.net, and here we have Carmine Tillman. Mr. Carmine Tillman is with Tucson Electric, and he just came out of the session, a power session, uh, at PV America 2013 here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania Convention Center. So, uh, Mr. Carmine, uh, Carmine uh, would you like to tell us what you have learned? Have you learned anything from this particular session? Um, actually, I have, and it's uh, attend solar sessions throughout uh, the United States and uh, routinely either speak or engage in the SEPA activities. And I wanted to actually come out to the PV America East uh, to kind of get a different perspective, obviously, being out in Arizona. Uh, the solar industry is somewhat different than it is in the East Coast, so I always like to get a different perspective on how entities are moving forward with different programs, uh, different development opportunities uh, throughout the country, just kind of broaden my knowledge and maybe take some of those ideas uh, and if they're applicable to uh, what we can utilize out west, or perhaps share some of the ideas that we've done out west with the folks back east. So. Oh, we also heard during the session a discussion on uh, collaboration. At Rally, that's one of the main things they're focusing on. And what are, what's your experience in working in Tucson Electric in terms of need of collaboration? Um, it's a great question, and it's actually one that uh, um, we're big proponents of collaborative efforts. Um, we recognize that as a utility, uh, although we may have the, the mandates for renewable energy, we're not experts in many of the fields. So we have and have had a long-standing relationship with the University of Arizona, as well as uh, Arizona Research Institute for Solar Energy, more commonly referred to as AZ Rise. Uh, we work with collaborative efforts from another or a number of entities, um, such as uh, various grant opportunities when we'll bring in outside universities or outside uh, entities such as IBM or other folks. Try all work the same goal, but uh, utilizing whatever experiences and resources that each of the specific entities bring to the table, such as researchers, developers. Uh, again, we have the load center. We have a, a very engaged uh, management team from our CEO and president on down. So we really enjoy the collaborative efforts. It helps us uh, to really promote the renewable energy, in particular in solar, and taking it to the next level because we really can't find all the answers on our own. So we need help, and uh, the collaborative efforts are the best way for utilities, particularly with the universities. What kind of challenges have you been facing when this, there's been a great amount of changes within solar or renewable energy world? So uh, let's say challenges that you may have been facing or any of the consumers have been facing. Well, I think there's a number of challenges uh, depending on your perspective. Uh, from the consumer's perspective, it's always been whether or not it's been cost effective for them or, or affordable to them. And there's been a number of models with the leasing model coming out most recently, which has afforded the opportunity to a number of residents to be able to take advantage of solar energy in particular. Um, the cost has come down dramatically. Uh, in our areas, we've seen uh, installed uh, residential systems down into three and a half dollar a watt. So that makes that uh, very cost effective for many people. Uh, from the utilities perspective, uh, obviously the larger integration of distributed generation as well as utility scale projects as we move forward to meet uh, the various RPS standards in the state uh, provides uh, unique opportunities and challenges for the utility to both operate the grid as we have historically done while meeting certain reliability criteria um, while providing the same reliable service that our customers have always enjoyed. So it's a progression, uh, it's a learning curve for I think most people involved. Uh, from the installer and developers, there's many challenges, with the, whether it's regulatory uncertainty or backlash or uh, the recession, which has obviously had a hand in determining whether or not folks could move forward with the installation of solar. So all of the challenges have, uh, there have been many, but I think we've been able to co overcome most of them. Oh, wonderful. But um, RPS, now for those of you who are viewing out there, would you please explain it? And I don't think all 50 states have them. No, that's correct. And the RPS, uh, it'll be referred to as, it's a renewable portfolio standard, and that's the state requirement. Um, and I may be off on this, but approximately 30 of the, the states and uh, D.C. have a renewable portfolio standard, and it's some state requirement for the regulated utilities to have a certain amount of renewable energy uh, into their grid. Ours is based on a uh, percentage of sales for each uh, the regulated utilities mm -hmm. uh, in Arizona. It's, not particularly aggressive, it's about 15% by 2025, but even that uh, provides unique challenges for us. And there are other states with higher standards that are slightly different. We do have one of the more aggressive distributed generation carve-outs uh, of anywhere in the United States. So, oh, And your RPS started in which year? Uh, 2007, and with it's uh, designed to be uh, maximum by 2025. Oh, 2025, okay. 
That's what, really so. great. And um, would you care to share information or your experience in terms of uh, getting RPS for the Arizona and how, how long of a process was, did it take and uh, how I, successful has it been for your state so far? Uh, the RPS had actually started in its infancy um, back in conversations as early as 2000 mm -hmm. when they had uh, an energy portfolio standard, which was kind of the very scratching of the surface, if you will, of renewable energy. It was a very, very uh, small kind of mandate, uh, more of kind of a, a program to get utilities to start, start thinking about how to integrate renewable energy. It was a very, very small percentage. And then over the next several years, through public process and corporation commission hearings, a uh, renewable portfolio was standard was designed throughout 2006 and implemented by 2007. So it was a fairly lengthy process over the course of the first decade. And now it has been an implementation for the last uh, five years. And it has been pretty successful, both uh, Arizona Public Service, the largest investor owned utility that serves the greater Phoenix area, as well as Tucson Electric and then our sister company, Unisource Electric or UNS Electric, um, all have this same standard. So we serve the majority of the customers in the state and it's been very successful. All the utilities are actually way ahead of the standard, uh, the, the, which we consider to be the minimum requirement. It actually is the minimum required. So all of us are very, very far ahead of that minimum. Wonderful. No, must, <clears throat> that must mean it's been very successful and it's definitely needed. <clears throat> it has been very successful uh, with the implementation of the distributed generation programs, um, such to the point that we've actually seen the utility incentives for many of those programs go to zero or near zero so it'll be one of the few states that uh, if the industry is successful in being able to accommodate, you'll start seeing installations without utility incentives. Um, so that alone is uh, probably a great achievement throughout the United States to, to be able to see uh, the removal of incentives from utility and still see the survival of a solar installation. Uh, granted, it's Arizona where we have a tremendous amount of sun. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the great places for to work. We do too in Florida. All right, absolutely. We have a lot to learn. I know, mm -hmm. and I love Florida, but we have more sunny days. <laughs> <laughs> but we do love uh, the solar implementation. Um, it is a challenge, but uh, it's a challenge that we've uh, accepted and that we're moving forward to meet. If anyone, let's say if um, uh, someone from another state that, or any other utility company would like to see RPS coming forward in their particular state and would like to also learn from your particular state, um, what would you say your contact information would be? Um, you can certainly contact me at Tucson Electric Power. Uh, Carmine Tillman, uh, last name is spelled T-I-L-G-H-M-A-N. You can email me at Tucson Electric. My email is my first initial and last name, C Tillman at TEP.com. Or you can certainly find me, uh, if you Google me at Tucson Electric Power, you'll certainly find me. I end up uh, speaking at a number of conferences. But I've worked with a number of different utilities throughout the Midwest and East Coast as well, trying to give them some information and help them along where they don't have an RPS, uh, particularly in Midwest states where they'll call um, to either promote either the community solar program that has been very, very successful in our area. And uh, so I'm uh, really available uh, to kind of help other utilities kind of duplicate some of the successes we've had. Yeah, wonderful. That's what we've been seeing here at PV America uh, 2013, PV America East 2013. And definitely um, collaborative effort is the focus here. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Tellman. Thank you, and, Susan. And uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Here we're signing off. Susan Sun, Nanamaker with sunisfeature.net.